the first discussion, we talk about the introductory topics of the course as well as the preliminary provisions of Republic Act 9285, basically known as the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act. So to continue with our discussion, in this episode, we will be talking more on the implementing rules and regulations of the law. So if you can still remember, in the first discussion, I mentioned about Office of the Alternative Dispute Resolution. And the Office of the Alternative Dispute Resolution is one of the mandates of Republic Act 9285 A purpose of the OEDR is to somehow assist to make the solution of conflict incidents more faster, more efficient, and more effective. So in accordance to the law, the divisions of the Office of the Alternative Dispute Resolution are the following. Number one is the Secretariat. Number two, the Public Information and Promotion Division. Number three is Training Division. And the last is Records and Library Division. So we will be talking about the function of each division of the OADR. So the Secretariat shall provide necessary support and discharge such other functions and duties as may be directed by the Executive Director. On the other hand, the Public Information and Promotion Division shall be charged with the dissemination of information, the promotion of the importance and public acceptance of mediation, conciliation, arbitration, or any combination thereof, and other ADR forms as a means of achieving speedy and efficient means of resolving all disputes. So if you could still remember, in the first discussion, Adonai Kalahian and mediation, conciliation, and arbitration. Because as what I have I had stated in the first discussion, when you say arbitration, the agreement is executed by the arbitrators. Okay? So a palpili sa arbitrators will depend upon the agreement of the parties. So, an award or an agreement is executed by the arbitrators. On the other hand, when we say mediation, the agreement is executed by the parties. So, meaning, a purpose of medi mediator is to simply mediate the dispute. On the other hand, conciliation requires a third party. Because a third party is only um, uh, is only um, taking the role of advisorship in giving solution to the dispute. So on purpose of public information and promotion division is to simply disseminate the information, promoting the significance or the importance uh, in terms of mediation, conciliation, and arbitration in the speedy and efficient means of resolving all disputes. Kay kung speedy, or mas dali, or mas paspas, ang pag-resolve sa mga disputes o, pan o panagbingkin uh, sa usa o duha katawo, the more nga dali ang resolution sa usa ka case, mas maayo para dili kayo mabugatan ang ato nga torte. Kaya kung daghan kayo nga kaso, nga atong gifile, daghan kayo complaint, nga atong gifile sa prosecution, tapos ang prosecution ipasa po sa court, there is a big possibility that sometimes there is overloading on the part of uh, the, the court as the, um, as the agency that will render decision. The third division is the training division, shall be charged with the formulation of effective standards for the training of the alternative dispute resolution practitioners, conduct of training in accordance with such standards, issuance of certifications of training to ADR practitioners and ADR service providers. So meaning, again, in the previous discussion, we would say ADR service providers, maunay ka itong mga institution, mga tao na qualified to mediate or to arbitrate on a particular dispute. So the last division is the Record and Library Division shall be charged with the establishment and maintenance of central repository of EDR laws, reg rules and regulations, jurisprudence, books, articles, 
and other information about EDR in the Philippines and elsewhere. On the other hand, the Office of the Alternative Dispute Resolution also consists of an advisory council. So, mo composition sa advice, advisory council sa OEDR. So, number one is mediation profession, arbitration profession, EDR organizations, IBP. When you say IBP, this refers to the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, katong mga lawyers na to. Academ, when you say academ, mo katong uh, personalities coming from universities, colleges, or any educational institution. Ang role sa advisory council is to advise the executive director on policy, operational, and other relevant matters. The council shall meet regularly at least once in every two months or upon call by the executive director. Now let us go now to the composition of the arbitral tribunal. By the way guys, again, akong usbon ha, na ay kalahian ang arbitration, mediation, o Conciliation. Mo yun ay pinaka-basic na information na dapat natong mabaluan. When we say arbitration, again, ang award or ang decision comes from the arbitrators. Ang pagpili sa arbitrators, ato nang isgutan po drone. On the other hand, we say conciliation, ang agreement gikan mismo sa duha ka parties. When we say conciliation, ang third party, ura na siya ga take of role nga advisorship para maka arrive or maka obtain og agreement ang duha ka party. So let us go now again to the composition of the arbitral tribunal. Number of arbitrators. The parties are free to determine the number of arbitrators. Failing such determination, the number of arbitrators shall be 3. So again, according to Republic Act 9285 Depende ang pagpili sa hidaghanon sa arbitrators. So, nagadepende na sa agreement sa duha ka parties. So, meaning, kung ang usa ka party, mayroon siyang kinalatag upat o kinalatag duha ka arbitrators, tapos mo agree ang second party, then the number agreed by the two parties shall be the number of arbitrators. Pero if in case, Dili sila magkasabot as to the number uh, of arbitrators to who will arbitrate the proceedings then according to the law there shall be at least or there shall be three arbitrators which will um, facilitate the proceedings As to the appointment of arbitrators the parties are free to agree on a procedure of appointing the arbitrator or arbitrators again the luxury or the privilege is upon the agreement between two parties as to the appointment of arbitrators. Next, failing such agreement in an arbitration with three arbitrators, each party shall appoint one arbitrator and the two arbitrators thus appointed shall appoint the third arbitrator. So, claro kayo ha? Unequivocally speaking according to the law. Diba? Again, una ang Duha ka parties, when I say parties, I'm referring to maybe the complainant or the defendant or kanang, uh, kanang duha nga kinahanglan mo arrive o agreement or kanang duha ka parties na involved sa dispute. Again, ang pinakauna is, dapat magsabot sila kung pila ka buhok arbitrators. Pero kung di sila magkasinabot kung pila ka buhok arbitrators, kamoy mo facilitate sa arbitration proceedings, according to the law, kinahanglan na ay Tulo, right? Na ay tulo ka buhok ang um, arbitrators. Furthermore, the law provides that failing such agreement in an arbitration with three arbitrators, ang mahitabo, ang usaka party, sila mo mag-apwet o magpili sa ilang na uh, napilian ang arbitrator. On the other hand, ang ikaduhang nga party will also appoint one arbitrator, meaning duha na kabuk, tapos ang ikatulo na arbitrator shall be appointed by the arbit two arbitrators chosen by the two parties. So meaning, ang usaka party, muhatag og usaka arbitrator, ang ikaduha nga party, muhapwit og another arbitrator, meaning duha na, tapos ang duha ka arbitrators, sila mo mag-appoint sa ikatulo. Okay? 
dapat ato ang hinubluman because this might be one of the um, topics that will come out in the board examination. If any party fails to appoint the arbitrator within 30 days of receipt of a request to do so from the from the other party, or if the two arbitrators fail to agree on the third arbitrator within 30 days of their appointment shall be made upon request of party by the appointing of authority. So again, according to the law, after 30 days, kung wala pa dyan na-appoint ng arbitrator, okay, wala yung na-appoint ng arbitrator sa first party or second party, o wala yung ikatulong arbitrator na na-appoint sa, sa two arbitrators, ang mahita mo is, it will be the appointing authority who will choose the arbitrators. In an arbitration with a, with a sole arbitrator, meaning usarak arbitrator, if the parties are unable to agree on the arbitrator, he or she shall be appointed upon the request of a party by the appointing authority. So again, kung di magkasinabot ang duwak ka parties in choosing the arbitrator, it will be the appointing authority who will take over on the appointment. Now, kin summoning appointing authority. Appointing authority is the person or the institution named in the arbitration agreement as the appointing authority or the regular arbitration institution under whose rules the arbitration is agreed to be conducted. Failure or impossibility to act. If an arbitrator becomes unable to perform his or her functions or for other reasons fails to act with delay, his or her mandate terminates if he or she withdraws from his or her office or if the parties agreed on the termination. So again, if in case a Osaka arbitrator fails to perform his functions, pwede nga, it terminates siya. Kisa may mag-terminate. Ang termination is upon the agreement of the two parties. Otherwise, if the controversy remains concerning any of these grounds, any party may request the appointing authority to decide on the termination of the mandate, which decision shall be immediately executory and not subject for motion for reconsideration or appeal. So if in case, ang Osaka party will move for the termination of the um, arbitrator pwede na siyang matagan o uh, matagan o um, value by the appointing authority. Pwede siya nga by execute. On the grounds nga wala o nakitaan nga wala ni perform ang arbitrator sa iya nga functions. Note, a substitute arbitrator may replace. If in case, kung wala na ka sinabot or ang usak arbitrator was found not performing his functions, pwede siya nga ilisan o substitute nga arbitrator. Court assistance in taking evidence. The arbitral tribunal may request from a court of the Philippines assistance in taking evidence. The arbitral tribunal shall have the power to require any person to attend a hearing as a witness. Pwede siya makasupina witnesses and documents require the retirement of any witness during the testimony of any other witness. So, pwede na nga ma, ma pwede mo na ang mga powers sa uh, arbitral tribunal. If during arbitral proceedings, the parties sit on the dispute, the arbitral tribunal shall terminate the proceedings and if requested by the parties and not objected by that arbitral tribunal, record the settlement in the form of an arbitral award or on agreed terms. So meaning, if in case during the proceedings of arbitration, nagkasinabot na ang duha ka parties, ang first party o ang second party, on a particular agreement, pwede nga ka na agreement, Ibutang siya into writing in a form of arbitral award on agreed terms. So, automatic, maklosure na. Diba? Ang last stage sa arbitration will be the closure. So, closure na in a sense that nahuma naman o naanamay agreement and waka parties. Remember ka that nga ang pinaka-ultimate goal sa mediation, conciliation, or arbitration 
is the agreement that should be reached by the two parties. So if in case nagkasinabot na yun silang duha, nagkasinabot na ang duha ka parties, nanay again, award. Okay? Ang award nga, gi-execute sa arbitrators. Unsa may contents or form and contents of the award. So the following are the form and contents of the award. The award shall be made in writing and shall be signed by the arbitrator or arbitrator. So again, nagadepende kung pila ka bok arbitrators on a particular dispute. The award shall state the reasons upon which it is based. The award shall state its date and the place of arbitration. After the award is made, a copy signed by the arbitrator shall be delivered to each party. So meaning, ang, ang, ang award or ang agreement shall be um, shall be furnished in, in various copies. Ang usang copy ang ato ihatag sa first party. Ang ikaduwa is ihatag dito sa second party. Next, termination of proceedings. The arbitral proceedings are terminated by the final award or by an order of the arbitral tribunal. On the other hand, the arbitral tribunal shall issue an order for the termination of the arbitral proceedings when the claimant withdraws his or her its claim, the parties agree the termination of the proceedings, and number three, the arbitral tribunal finds that the continuation of the proceedings has for any other reasons become unnecessary or impossible. So again, ang arbitral proceedings or proceedings arbitration pwedeng magka-closure or pwedeng na ay termination. Dili mapadayon ang arbitration proceeding considering the three grounds according to Republic Act 9285. Unang ang ground, ang claimant ni withdraw sa iya na claim. Okay? Ni withdraw or ang usa ka party dili na ganahan na participate sa arbitration. So automatic wala'y mahimo ang arbitral tribunal but to terminate the proceedings. Ikaduha nga ground kung naay agreement, which is very ideal. Kay kung naay agreement nga na reach by the two parties, mas maayo para speedy at the same time efficient ang uh, efficient ang paghandle sa dispute. Ikatulo nga ground the arbitral tribunal finds that the continuation of the proceedings become or be, uh, becomes unnecessary or impossible. So, kung makita sa arbitral tribunal nga um, uh, in the proceedings, iyan nakita nga di yun di magkasinabot or di kun makakam up sa agreement or unnecessary ka ang, ang proceedings sa pagsito sa dispute, automatic pwede nga makarecommend or pwede nga maka uh, maka decide ang arbitral tribunal nga i-terminate na laman ang proceeding sa arbitration. Again, tulurang ka grounds ang pag-terminate sa arbitral proceedings. You have to remember this at all times. Una, withdrawal sa claimant or withdrawal sa a party. Withdrawal sa party. Kaduha, agreement sa duha ka parties or ikatulo, unnecessary or impossible ang continuation sa arbitration proceedings. Summary nature of proceedings before the court. A petition for recognition and enforcement of awards. When you say awards again, muli ka itong agreement sa dawa ka parties. Of awards brought before the court shall be heard and dealt with summarily in accordance with the special ADR rules. So automatic, um, pwede nga ma-recognize ang awards or agreement dito na sa court. So pwede nga i-enforce kung sa provisions or sa terms sa award. Next is on domestic arbitration. A controversy cannot be arbitrated where one of the parties to the controversy is an infant or a person judicially declared to be incompetent unless the appropriate court having jurisdiction approved a petition for permission to submit such controversy to arbitration made by the general guardian of the infant or of the incompetent. Again, lahi ang international arbitration o domestic arbitration. When we say domestic arbitration, we in the Philippine territory lang or local ra ang arbitration proceeding. So according to the Republic Act 9285, 
according to the law, once una infant or ikadua incompetent ang usa ka party nga na-involve sa controversy, dili pwede nga isitol ang dispute sa arbitral tribunal. Pero na ay exception. Ang exception kung mo allow ang korte, right? Kung mo allow ang korte nga i-represent ka ng infant o i-represent ka na ng incompetent na individual by the general guardian. Usap mo ito mga incompetent na mga individual. Perhaps we'll be talking about one best example are those individual, individuals who are uh, uh, persons that needs special attention. So, katong mga persons that needs special attention, po dito nga, makonsider nga physically incompetent. Or katong mga infant, or katong uh, below 18 years old. So, po dito nga, ba represented by the general guardian, if allowed by the court. But again, the general rule of law is that ang infant or ang incompetent na na-involved sa controversy should not be uh, should not be included or should not be allowed to participate in an arbitration proceedings. As to the rules on the selection of the number of arbitrators, sa domestic arbitration, pareha lang giyapon o provisions sa international arbitration. So the parties are free to determine the number of arbitrators. Failing such determination, the number of arbitrators shall be three. So same like Japan, based on the previous um, previous slides in the international arbitration, if in case dili makasinabot ang ang parties, pwede nga ang arb number of arbitrators tulo, right? Tulo ka buok. Pero ang pinakauna ko ng tiganong importance is that ang pag sa number of arbitrators should be upon the agreement of the two parties. Same provisions as to the appointment of arbitrators uh, sa international, uh, international arbitration. Any person appointed to serve as an arbitrator must be of legal age, knows how to read and write. No person appointed to serve as an arbitrator shall be related by blood or marriage within the sixth degree to either party to the controversy. No person shall serve as an arbitrator in any proceeding if he or she has or has had financial, fiduciary, or other interest in the controversy or has any personal bias which might prejudice the right of any party to a fair and impartial award. Take note of the sixth degree which is the requirement, right? Requirement sa Republic Act 9285. So meaning, if in the case, ang Osaka arbitrator, let us say, um, let us say, nagkasinabot sila that there will be three arbitrators. Then, one party selects a person uh, who is um, a relative of the first party within the sixth degree. So, ang may tabo kay within sixth degree ba ng Osaka arbitrator nga gi-select sa Osaka party, ma-disqualify to nga selection. So, dili, pwede. At the same time, if there is controversy in terms of uh, financial or other interest that may result to personal bias by an arbitrator, automatic, gymnasia, according to the law nga, i-term, i-disqualify ang appointment sa kana nga arbitrator. Now, let us go now to other important notes in Domestic arbitration. The venue of the arbitration proceeding may be conducted in an office space, business center, a function room, or any suitable place agreed by the parties and the arbitral tribunal, which may vary precision hearing or conference. So again, depende sa um, depende sa arbitral tribunal or depende sa parties kung asa conduct rasa ang venue sa arbitration proceedings. Pwede siya sa office space, pwede sa business center, pwede po siya, pwede po siya sa function room or any uh, venues that could be conducive for the proceedings of the arbitration. The issuance of subpoena or subpoena justice come by the arbitral tribunal to compel the production of evidence. Again, lahi ang subpoena justice come o lahi, na, lahi po na ang subpoena at testificando. When it is a penal testificando, that means it is an order by the court um, ordering a person to submit or to 
uh, testify in the court. So, pina ad testificandum. Pero kung sa pina justicum, that means the person is required to submit a document. Okay? Kanang a document, the contain na siya o evidences. So, again, when we say sa pina justicum, it is an order coming from a competent um, authority to uh, for the person, ordering a person to submit a particular document. A party may during the proceedings represent himself, herself, or itself, or through a representative at such hearing. Each witness shall, before giving testimony, be required to take an oath. Other important notes in domestic arbitration are the following. No arbitrator shall act as a mediator in any proceedings, even if requested by the parties. That is according to Republic Act 9285, the arbitrator shall act as an shall act as, a, as an arbitrator. Okay? Dili dapat siya nga mahimo nga mediator. Kaya ang mediation ang agreement shall be conducted by uh, shall be obtained by the two parties. Arbitration dahil kay ang arbitration ang maghatag sa award or agreement is ang arbitrator. So according to the law, no arbitrator shall act as a mediator in any proceeding even if requested by the parties. Before assuming the duties of his or her office, an arbitrator must be sworn by any officer authorized by law to administer an oath. If the arbitrator shall refuse to take an oath or a permission, he or she shall be replaced. So requirement ang pag, uh, pag, ang oath taking sa arbitrator. So kung di siya matake ang oath uh, before an authorized person automatic pulihan or i-replace kana nga arbitrator. The arbitral tribunal shall have the power to administer oath. Next, a decision of the court confirming, vacating, setting aside, modifying, or correcting an arbitral award may be appealed to the Court of Appeals in accordance with special ADR rules. So, on the other hand, the proceedings for recognition and enforcement of an arbitration agreement or for vacation or setting aside of an arbitral award shall be filed with the court where the arbitration proceedings are conducted. So meaning if the arbitration proceedings were conducted in the region of Luzon, so dapat aditos korte sa Luzon ang pag-file sa uh, uh, or pag-recognize or pag-enforce sa arbitration agreement or sa award. So kung nasa Dumaguete City, i-conduct ang arbitration proceedings, so dapat ang kote sa uh, Dumaguete mo ay mo enforce sa award. Or sa korte where the asset to be attached or divided upon or the act to be enjoined is located, where any of the parties to the dispute resides or has its place of business or in the National Capital Judicial Region at the option of the applicant. So those are the provisions that regulates the conduct of domestic arbitration as well as international arbitration. So, uh, katong mga provisions, even though we have a lot of provisions in Republic Act 9285 uh, regulating the domestic and international arbitration. But then again, dili na to pwedeng ma-discuss ang tanan because those Provisions are highly technical, but the provisions what that we discuss in this episode are those provisions that are basic at the same time are very significant, which could be applied in our profession as future criminologists. So, um, to continue, let us go now to early neutral evaluation. So again, an early neutral evaluation was discussed in the first discussion in episode 1. But then again, ato siyang i-balik, ato i-recapitulate. So, ang early neutral evaluation is an ADR process when parties and their lawyers are brought together early in a pre-trial phase to present summaries of their cases and receive a non-binding assessment by an experienced neutral person with expertise in the subject in the, substan in the substance of a dispute. So when we say the early neutral evaluation, this will take place before trial. So dili pa magsugod ang trial. So say may tabo sa early neutral evaluation. 
there is an expert specialized in a particular field related to the dispute or controversy who will be invited. Okay? He invites you. For example, if a particular dispute involves, let us say, um, traffic incident. Right? Traffic incident. Tapos ang panaglalis ga involve sa balayranan or civil liability kung kinsay mo bayad dapat sa damage sa property. So pwede nga mo come in or pwede mo, mo uh, intervene or ma-invite ang usaka traffic investigator, expert in a traffic investigation to somehow shed light on a particular issue. So possibly, the traffic investigator will have to provide his recommendations or assessment on a particular existing issue. So pwede mo yun siguro ang traffic investigator na uh, ikaw, uh, first party, um, ikaw may salaan na eh. So basically, the way I see it, based on evidences, ikaw mo dapat magbayad. Okay, kung maabot pa ni sa korte, um, if the case will be brought to trial in the court, um, I think all of you cadets are aware na the the expenses, the expenditures in a trial is is huge. Or dako. Dako kayo ang balayranan sa korte. Kaya magbayad pa ka sa imo nga lawyer. Magbayad pa ka dito sa uh, uh, acceptance fee o sa uh, uh, pag-present sa imo nga lawyer sa korte. So this these expenditures is somehow that will encourage the you know the parties to come up with a solution the soonest if possible na dili pa mag trial so a purpose of early neutral evaluation is again to somehow declug you know workload to minimize um overloading on the part of the uh, court pillar so kung magkasinabot before trial din mas maayo so kung dili magkasinabot even if a particular expert is invited to shed light on the issue, then again, wag may memo kayo, wag may agreement so, sa korte mag-abot or mag-trial dito sa korte. Tapos ang korte na may determine sa innocence or guilt of the accused. So the following are the provisions regulating the early neutral evaluation. The neutral or early neutral evaluation shall be governed by the rules and procedure agreed upon by the party. So, pare-pareha lang dyan po siya sa domestic or international arbitration. Uh, parties will be the one to select uh, on the procedure of the early neutral evaluation. If the parties are unable to select a neutral third person or appointing authority, then either party may request the default appointing authority to make the appointment. So, same with arbitration na ang parties will be the one to select for the third person. Diba sa arbitrator, magpili sila o pinakabuok ang arbitrators. So kung di sila magkasinabot, pupili ako sa ka-party o one arbitrator, ang ikaduha ka-party, pupili o ikaduha ka-arbitrator, tapos ang doha ka-arbitrator selected will be the ones to select for the third arbitrators. So sa early neutral evaluation, kung di dyan po sila magkasinabot, same with arbitration, Kung di magkasinabot, ang appointing authority will be the one to make an appointment to conduct the early neutral evaluation. The neutral third person may structure the evaluation process in any manner he or she deems appropriate. In the course thereof, the neutral third person may identify areas of agreement, clarify the issues, define those that are uh, contentious, and encourage the parties to agree on a definition of issues. So, as I have said a while ago, ang purpose ko nga na ay, uh, na ay early neutral evaluator para at least the expert or the third person will shed light on the issue para maka-identify siya areas nga pwedeng mag-agree ang, ang duha ka parties. Again, ang purpose of early neutral evaluation para at least magaan-gaan ang trabaho sa korte kay grabe na kadagan ang cases nga naa sa korte karon so kung magkasinabot uh, in, a, in an early neutral evaluation mas maayo the neutral third person shall issue a written evaluation or assessment within 30 days from the conclusion of the evaluation process 
the opinion shall be non-binding and shall set forth how the neutral third person would have ruled had the matter had the matter been subject to a binding process. All papers and written presentation shall be treated as confidential. So again, ang yata sa malawad according to Republic Act 9285 is 30 days. Okay? 30 days. Sa third person. Ang 30 days, magsugod gikan sa conclusion sa evaluation process. So kung sa malawad sa 30 days, so within that specific or within that reglementary period, the third person will submit his opinion pero ang opinion non binding muni nakalahi sa nakalahi dito sa um, arbitration kasi sa arbitration agreement mang yun okay Arbit the arbitrators will be the one to execute an award or the terms of agreement pero sa early neutral evaluation ang pag-execute dili agreement but rather opinion which shall be considered as non-binding. When we say non-binding, pwede nga, dili ninyo nga tumanon. Pwede ninyo nga dili i-accept. Okay? It is just an opinion coming from the third person. Pero kanang opinion, gika na sa uh, specialization, gika na sa um, expertise sa third person. So again, those are the regulations under early neutral evaluation. Now, let us move now to Mini trial. Again, in the preliminary topics we discussed in the first discussion or in the first episode, I also mentioned about to you the difference between um, early neutral evaluation and mini trial. So, ito ang balikon para masabtan giyod kung nung sa'yo nakalahi aning, uh, aning duha. Mini trial means a structured dispute resolution, resolution method in which the merits of a case are argued before a panel comprising of senior decision makers with or without the presence of a neutral third person before which the parties seek a negotiated settlement. So, muna yung nakalay sa early neutral evaluation o sa mini-trial. Because in mini-trial, walay ginatawag o neutral third person. Only panel of senior decision makers. Ang sa early new, uh, neutral evaluation, walay panel ng decision makers but rather only a third person. So, so a mini trial shall be governed by the rules and procedures agreed by the parties. A mini trial shall be conducted either as separate dispute resolution process, a continuation of mediation, neutral or early neutral evaluation or any other EDR process. So, on sa maning mini-trial? So, ang mini-trial is somewhat like a catch basin, a continuation, kung uh, na ay gamay nga kulang sa mediation or sa neutral or early neutral evaluation or even in the arbitration. So, kung na ay gamay nga kulang at kinalan pa nga isitol, pwede i-conduct through a mini-trial. On the other hand, the parties may agree that a mini-trial be conducted with or without the presence and participation of a, of a neutral third person. If a neutral third person is agreed upon and chosen, he or she shall preside over the mini-trial. So as I have said a while ago, generally speaking, a mini-trial dili kakinahanglan of third person, unlike sa early neutral evaluation. Pero, right, the exception is, if in case... And the waka parties, mo agree sila or magpili yun sila, mo insist nga na ay third person, except from the um, panel of uh, senior decision makers, then pwede. In that case, ang third person na mo ay mag-preside sa mini-trial. So again, as I have said a while ago, generally speaking, ang naalang is are the um, decision makers. Wala ang third person. Pero, Ang exception is that if in case again, ang dua ka parties, mas ganaan sila nga na ay third person, din ang third person mo ay mag-preside sa mini-trial. The parties may agree to appoint one or more but equal in number per party, senior executives on its behalf to sit as mini-trial panel members. So meaning, kung duha ang pilion sa isa ka party, dapat duha po ang sa sikat party ang pilion. Dili po hindi nga, walay impartiality. Alright? sa selection sa senior decision makers. 
So kung mo select o tulo as decision makers ang first party, dapat tulo po kabog ang iselect nga decision makers on the part of the second party. In addition, the senior executives chosen to set as many trial panel members must be duly authorized to negotiate and settle the dispute with the other party. At the date, time and place agreed upon, the parties shall appear before the many trial panel members, the lawyer of each party, and or authorized representative shall present his or her case starting with the claimant followed by the respondent. So, pwede nga na ay representative ang usaka party sa mini trial. So, depende sa date of time or sa venue nga nasabutan o asa ang mini trial ikanda. Furthermore, unless the parties agree on a shorter or longer period, the presentation in chief shall be made without interruption for one hour lang according to the law. According to Republic Act 9285, the rebuttal or so rebuttal shall be 30 minutes. Mono yung proceeding ha? Ayaw ninyo ni Kalimte. At the end of each presentation, rebuttal or so rebuttal, the many trial panel members may ask clarificatory questions from any of the presenters. After the mini trial, the mini trial panel members shall negotiate a settlement of the dispute by themselves. So, ang panel members moy mo lay down sa possible settlement or terms of agreement sa duha ka parties. So basically mao to yung mga provisions nga ka regulate sa mini trial. We are also done with the early neutral evaluation and of course we are done uh, presenting with the provisions or discussing the provisions regulating the mini trial. So let us move now to mediation arbitration or the mid-arb. Ang mid-arb or mediation arbitration is also one of the strategies or one of the alternative dispute resolution. The mid-arb is a two-step dispute resolution process, process involving mediation and then followed by arbitration. Again, lahi, lahi or lahi ang mediation, lahi ang arbitration. So, combination sa duha, ang tawag is mid-arb or mediation arbitration. So again, the difference between mediation and arbitration, para maklaro yun ni, atong balik-balik ko, ang mediation again, the agreement is executed by the two parties. And the third person will be the one to mediate over the dispute. While on the other hand, ang arbitration, ang agreement or the terms of the agreement shall be executed by the arbitrator. So again, ang mediation arbitration or mid-arb, combination of mediation first followed by arbitration. So the following are the regulations under Republic Act 9285 concerning the mediation or arbitration. A mediation arbitration shall be governed by the rules and procedure, procedure agreed by or agreed upon by the parties. No person shall have shall having been engaged and having acted as mediator of a dispute between the parties following a failed mediation act as arbitrator of the same dispute unless the parties in a written agreement expressly authorize the mediator to hear and decide the case as an, as an arbitrator. Again, according to the rules of law as, as provided by Republic Act 9285, so katong mediator na wala na karich o agreement or there is a, when you say wala na karich o agreement, meaning there is a failed mediation. Dili siya pwede nga mahimong arbitrator. Right? Kay ang mediation arbitration, o na is mediation man, sunod arbitration. So if in case, a mediation padaan, wala nakakam up o agreement, so dili pwede ang mediator na mahimo po nga arbitrator. Pero na exception. If in case, expressly authorized by the mediator or na written agreement sa doha ka parties nga i-authorize sa Japan ang mediator sa failed mediation, so pwede nga i-allow as long na ay again agreement so more rules and regulations concerning the mediation and arbitration process so again in this episode we discuss about the inter international and domestic arbitration we discuss about the early neutral evaluation we discuss about the mini trial and we also discuss about the mediation arbitration again 
ang domestic arbitration meaning local nga arbitration international meaning sa international to sa gawas sa gawas gi arbitrate when we say early evaluation or early neutral evaluation i conduct siya before a pre trial there tapos na i third person nga i invite expert on concerning the dispute on the other hand nata ginatawag og mini trial a mini trial is a continuation of the arbitration mediation or any ETR process ang last is mediation arbitration which is a combination of uh, mediation in the first phase and second phase is arbitration so i hope you understand the um, salient provisions of republic act 9285 that, that are discussed in this episode so importante ang alternative dispute, dispute resolutions simply because number one um, there is overloading so much workload on the part of the court pillar so we need to declare cases from the court tapos ang solution na ito nakita is only the alternative dispute resolution so i hope you learn something from the discussion of this episode and if in case you have questions that perspire during the discussion you may type in at the comment section of this video and by the moment i take a look at the uh, at these comments or at these questions i may provide you with some tidbits of answers thank you so much for watching stay safe and god bless